Alex here, our speaker today, um, is uh, the president of Kruzhok movement uh, in Russia. That's uh, a movement started, uh, I believe, Alexei, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, by the National Technology Initiative of Russia as a part of um, talent development program. And that's very similar to the makers movement except for it covers a bit more. It creates a horizontal type of cooperation, um, horizontal type of connections between grown-ups and uh, children in order to educate them and can create a framework for future education uh, for the development of future talents. So we're talking about the, um, we're going to talk about high school students contacts from the NTI, that's National Technology Initiative. And I, I would like to say a few words about what NTI is. So it's, um, it's quite exciting, uh, strategic program, developing the conditions and uh, st strategic planning, developing conditions for the emergence of, comp of companies in Russia that will be successful and competitive at the fundamentally new market in the future. So the, the founders of NCI came with the multidimensional approach, how to look at the technological development. And they're looking in particular at uh, uh, different dimensions. One of them are the key market niches and possible types of products and services to fill these niches. They were looking at um, key technologies to create new products and services, and um, also for required infrastructure, required ecosystems, services, measures for support, including institutional support, financial support, research tools, commercialization activities, and so on. And the market has been selected based on the market pool approach and I will and a few key principles, I will just list a few of them. Um, one of the principles that selected market develop will become significant enough globally, over a hundred billion dollars by 2035. The current existing market uh, was like, should be generally, uh, should lack the serious development standards, technological standards uh, is probably lacking general acceptance. Uh, pe peculiar that the, it's a prevalence of um, B2C markets over B2B. And, um, and basically the markets are essentially decentralized. So there's markets without intermediaries. Uh, having said this, is um, so it's not a um, it's not an attempt to game a competition and uh, sometimes compete with the existing champions of the markets of develop you know that already exist. It's a question of developing new markets that will be relevant kind of societal driving forces as well as the future development of the uh, technologies. So the entire development, so the, this uh, matrix describes exactly what I just said. So you see on the left hand vertical side, those are working group, those are the markets, energy, um, agriculture market, food production, safety and security, health, aerospace technologies, marine technologies, automotive technologies, uh, financial, and uh, neuro interfaces. On the top uh, horizontal axis, those are technologies that are making this uh, market stick. The lower axis is about what is required to be created as, as the part of ecosystem. And um, on the right hand, those are participants. So you can see that the, um, that's uh, that actually the state X uh, works only as a facilitator for this program. The 
the whole working groups are being developed by a combination of you know, fast-growing technology companies, participants from leading universities, research centers, experts, professional communities, sometimes even informal major business associations and so on. And the essential part is the Center for Child Development and Education here, because people need to develop future talent. Uh, now, so the, all these markets, they've led to creation at the currently nine different working groups that are uh, road mapping the future development of technologies. And one of the groups related to this particular particular uh, meetup we're talking about is IronNet. Um, and it has a subgroup called SpaceNet. SpaceNet and IronNet group uh, is uh, headed by Sergei Zhukov, a former cosmonaut. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and they are, they actually, the uh, recent roadmap was created just last week, I believe, for the, the uh, for this particular group. Um, the rest of them, I will go to skip it now. Um, so then, but we'll go to development talent and university development strategy that's coming out of NTI. So on the left side, uh, it's listing the participants and challenges. It uh, connects together students age 12, 16, through interest, through schools, through NTI competitions. It com connects um, you know, experts from NTI companies, providing lifelong learnings, it uh, connects educational programs for the young, mm -hmm. and um, it also it has a form of the uh, NTI University, hosted by RVC, but one of the institutes of development of Russian Federation, and this um, NTI University is uh, is creating the um, environment for like environment ecosystem, like development of centers for technology, transfer technology, commercialization, uh, building up network scientific, networking scientific labs for technology pr um, priority areas, and, uh, leading the experimental progress. Okay. Um, that's basically the short, very short introduction from me because I would be able to speak about NCI for hours. But obviously, it's not the topic of today's discussion. And now I'd like to introduce the. We, look, we were looking at the uh, specific uh, section of aerospace engineering uh, 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 program of NTI contest for uh, school kids. And um, Alexey Fedosev is the uh, agreed to to make a presentation describing in more detail this section. And he's the president of Kruzhok Association and one of the, actually, one of the founders of NTI Contest. So our intention was to showcase the contents and see if we'll be able to recreate something similar here. It will be interesting for us. With the, without future ado, let me pass it over to Alexei. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me uh, introduce myself in a few words. Uh, I uh, have background in software engineering, and I work for more than 10 years in uh, Moscow, Russia, and the United States, and New Hampshire, and uh, Silicon Valley, uh, working on uh, software uh, solutions in security and uh, other fields. Uh, but uh, uh, after that, uh, I would say, uh, Again, uh, more than 10 years, I work in education. It was uh, the shift pretty similar, probably, as John <laughs> said before. Um, I wanted to find something more inspiring and, uh, uh, you know, uh, useful for people around me. And then that, that, that's why I, I went to educational field. Uh, and uh, together with my friends, we run a startup uh, about space engineering. It, education in space engineering and uh, 
we created some solutions and if you are interested uh, i will say about this as well but um uh, in 2017 uh, uh not uh 2015 we started the nti contest so it was uh, something like a uh, uh, new possibility of uh spreading our ideas uh, to the whole country. And in 2017, we started the Kruzhok Association, uh, the movement of, uh, we, we, we not created the movement, we just uh, united uh, some um, interesting people who was, uh, uh, who fond of, uh, was uh, fond of uh, new technologies and new possibilities for kids. And uh, we just, uh, found the way how to support them uh, using some resources, uh, corporate resources, governmental resources, and etc. Do you see my presentation? Is it is it fine? Okay, okay. So um, we have uh, this uh, the context of national technology in initiative. Uh, Yuri said uh, about this. So it is sort of special government program which support uh, new technological spheres, new markets. And uh, we uh, work on, uh, I, I would say, uh, in different uh, layer, we work with uh, all these markets and all these ideas, but we work with students and school students to uh, introduce them into this uh, stuff. But uh, the main thing we work on, uh, it's about empowering, uh, empowering young people to make their own projects and make it uh, from the idea to the implementation. So here you can see the picture of the different steps, how our students created CubeSat uh, satellites uh, and they uh, started uh, this flight from the International Space Station. It was two years ago and uh, this project uh, lasted for two years. So it, it was uh, required two years from the idea of uh, research satellites to make them find sponsorship uh, and make these uh, satellites and run it from the International Space Station. Uh, and now it's, they are still working now and sending uh, research information to uh, the Earth. So uh, we want to uh, make a possibility for school children uh, uh, to uh, run something real, not just play with technologies, not just, uh, you know, know uh, make uh, it possible to know what uh, is going on in the real world but make it by themselves and this is our mission and our position um, we have a special um, uh, philosophy i would say uh, it's about uh, practicing futures so uh, the future is going to be uh, uh, in a way that we will do it. So it's not about uh, making something, uh, you know, utopias and uh, things that we are just thinking about it. It's about making your future, practicing your future. And uh, we run these um, events and practices and talks with young people because in our country, I, I'm not sure about uh, New Zealand, but in Russia, we have lack of, uh, of discussions about future. We talk, uh, especially with kids, we talk a lot about our heroical past and uh, about uh, problems of the present time, but we do not, in, in, on TV, in YouTube, uh, whenever, we do not talk about future with kids. And I think this is a problem. And this is the thing we want to change. And uh, we have uh, the manifesto. Uh, you can find it uh, with this link. It is something like uh, our position on how we work with kids. And we have the almanac of uh, future practices, uh, which is a sort of, uh, I would say, international research. But uh, unfortunately, it's uh, just so the link is in Russian. So we will translate it, I think, in a month or two. So. It, it will be available for uh, in English as well. So uh, let's uh, uh, make a step to the National Technology Initiative Contest. We run this contest in 2015, so now we have uh, already six years of running this contest. Uh, it is about um, 
making uh, uh, new uh, technologies and uh, new challenges available for school children. So we run it uh, in the whole country and we have uh, a sort of uh, a competition from theoretical tasks to uh, making their uh, uh, making their prototypes and uh, hardware and uh, we the winners of these competitions go to universities without exams so it, it is a sort of uh, motivation for young people to join this movement because they have they have possibility to go to bet, uh, best universities in Russia and uh, it's very good way for them and for their parents and for their teachers it's inspiring them to participate um, and NTI uh, contest uh, uh, right now we have more than 30 competitions inside it dedicated to different technologies and diff different challenges uh, intellectual energy energetics uh, uh, genome editing uh, prototyping uh, big data big data analysis so uh, virtual reality but uh, now we will uh, see at the uh, aerospace engineering example as a uh, uh, as a topic which is a particular interest for you but also it is a, an example of uh, how it works uh, uh, inside uh, so we have three stages in this contest first stage is a purely theoretical stage and it is uh, uh, about solving uh, tasks in uh, physics and computer science uh, when uh, young people are required to uh, solve uh, as much as they can. And uh, after that, they uh, join in teams. So it is about team competition, actually. So they join in teams and uh, after the first stage, they work in teams and uh, they challenge teams and win in teams. Um, at the state tasks and the special software and special equipment. So in, uh, we work with uh, space flight simulators. We work with uh, special software, which allows uh, to understand how to work with the space satellite as a system. Uh, these simulators allow uh, uh, to calculate not just um, uh, orbital parameters of uh, the spacecraft, but also the uh, controlling system, uh, heat system, uh, heat and cooling system, uh, orientation, and also to understand how to deal with the uh, satellite as a complex engineering uh, uh, thing. And uh, they play with the real missions on the uh, Earth orbit, uh, required some navigation or communication or um, uh, uh, photographing uh, tasks uh, on the space, uh, on the Earth orbit. After that, we uh, choose the best teams uh, uh, about I would say one to two uh, hundred uh, young people. Uh, it's it different for different um, parts of this, uh, different topics of this contest. But for space uh, systems, usually it's about 100 uh, young people. It's about, uh, I would say, uh, 25, uh, 30 teams. And they um, go to the final stage. This year, um, uh, because uh, of uh, uh, COVID, um, uh, we had uh, online competition, but uh, usually the stage three is about a live competition. So they, are, uh, they uh, um, uh, actually, they met uh, in a special location uh, and they uh, work with uh, uh, hardware. So they, uh, this hardware uh, simulates um, uh, a satellite uh, for different missions, like orientation when they had to program this satellite uh, to have the specific orientation to other parts of the system. Communication, like they use a laser or a different other uh, optical uh, uh, ways of communication, and they write protocols and uh, control uh, application which 
which allows to communicate with the satellite. So um, every year we send task every year and uh, we use pretty different sides of space satellite engineering. We have challenge uh, about nano satellites or even bigger satellites about very small, um, very small uh, satellites which uh, uh, should uh, communicate uh, which is each other on the orbit and make uh, pretty similar research mission. We have two parts in this uh, uh, final stage uh, competition: the carrier three uh, U CubeSat satellite and the pack of picker sets uh, which uh, are um, used for uh, research uh research uh task and uh, during this uh, competition the young people are, uh, are required to um uh, uh, make this work in the hole so they uh, need to construct this pico satellite model and program it and uh, they need to uh, design the carrier with the uh, communication part and um, uh working with this uh, communication uh, in on a very deep level using uh, package handling and encoding and uh, working with noise stability and etc uh, they also need to create control program for the system and uh, even for the best participants if they could uh, they will design the docking system uh, which will allow to put it to, into space uh, the speaker satellites from this uh, free you Okay. Uh, I would say uh, uh, competition, they work not with hardware because it's very expensive actually. They work with the uh, prototype, with the models, but they uh, um, actually these models are pretty similar to they can use the same software, the same protocols, everything uh, they could use on the orbit. But uh, this uh, equips in uh, this competition for uh, 30 teams uh, working together in a line with the same, uh, you know, with the same tasks. So we can find the best team and uh, make them uh, winners. So um, actually, uh, this is just this is the story of this year, but uh, we have the same uh, pre probably uh, very similar tasks every year. And um, uh, actually, uh, we work with these kids not just in this contest, but also we create a, a network uh, of uh, clubs uh, on in our country uh, which work with this. Uh, tasks and with this uh, equipment. So uh, we have simulators available to them to play with uh, uh, systems in a virtual environment. We have educational uh, hardware which is available for these clubs and we call it Krujox uh, circles in English, uh, uh, clubs of uh, technological enthusiasts. Uh, and we have a special um, uh special programs for uh, students to work with experiments on international space station during the russian uh, model there we can run this experiment uh, experiments and uh, we have uh, some grant programs for students to run real satellites into the space so actually uh we want to create a sort of a ladder for uh, for um young people who are very interested in space and uh, we just put it from the task from uh, simple tasks to um, more complex more and more complex tasks uh, uh, coming to the real launches in uh, real uh, satellites i just want to uh, to show one more thing uh, if i have uh, time uh, probably it will be uh, interesting uh, for john uh, because uh, we have um, uh the special program uh, we have the special um how to say it uh uh equipment and materials uh for teachers uh who teach uh, this space engineering rocket train etc uh something like that um we have this uh, manual for um uh 
uh, educational uh, system for teachers how to build uh, this, uh, for example, rocketry lesson, how it works and uh, how, uh, how the propulsion works uh, and uh, how to make this rocket from papers and uh, what about stabilization of the flight and uh, how it works in physics and uh, how to make this um, uh, parachute available. So uh, this model allows to go from the uh, very beginning to the launch. And uh, th we have a set of these uh, models. Uh, I can show you just, uh, sorry, I can show you just, for example, one more model. So. It, it really helps uh, um, it, it really helps um, uh, young um, and interested uh, people and as well as uh, teachers uh, to uh, find the way uh, of um, uh, to find the way uh, for young people to uh, make them interest interesting in the space engineering and help them to teach the uh, uh, required skills and uh, find some practice uh, to make it possible. So uh, I, I, I think that uh, that's, that's it for the start. Uh, for the start, uh, uh, this discussion, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, I will be glad to talk with you. Uh, I, I'm really uh, glad that uh, we're talking about this uh, uh, literally from different sides of our planet, uh, you know, and <laughs> this is a great opportunity to make something uh, together and something, you know, orbital uh, in this uh, communication. Yeah, thank you. Very cool, thank you. Um, we might open it up for questions. I yes, guess. yes, surely. Thank you. Oh, I see one. <laughs> okay. Sorry, this is my son. John, John. Hi. Um, Hello. Hello. I heard you guys worked on the International Space Station. Um, is there any chance I could go there? Ah, if you do the work. Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty it's pretty hard to go there actually when you we talk about people because we have uh, uh, the competition between cosmonauts in Russia who who is going to go there. But we have very good system of uh, making experiments there. So you just uh, get your uh, installation in the box and send it to cosmonauts on the International Space Station. They can spend some time working with your lab, uh, working with your experiment there. So it, it's pretty expensive as well because they have not very much time to work with uh, school children experiments but we have this program and that's great that uh, we have this opportunity and uh, probably it's possible to make uh, international challenge here to find the best ideas of running these experiments but it is uh, unfortunately it's uh, only on the national level right now oh can i just um piggyback on that don't rule it out i shared an office with the guy who'd made it to the international space station but you know what he did? He did a lot of schooling. Keep telling you, but work hard and you'll get there. Um, so I got a little one here. <laughs> what? That's so good. So I, I had a couple of questions, if I may. Uh, and um, so I'm curious to know what came first, the resourcing for the program or the, um, the interest from the education side of things? Uh, yeah, it's uh, a good question. Uh, actually, we started from the startup uh, solution in the STEM field when we created the space, uh, the first version of this space simulator available for school children to play with this. And it was a sort of, uh, it was uh, not, um, the same as Kerbal Space Station. You probably know the Kerbal Space Station uh, software. It was not so playful, but it was more scientific. So it was about calculating and make it, uh, it required real calculations with uh, real physics and playing with the modeling and uh, the telemetry from the space. So it, it was a very uh, engineering simulator, actually. And uh, we ran it for schools. It was not very simple because teachers was hard to play with this software. And we tried to learn uh, to teach teachers how to work with this. But um, 
when we start NTI contest, I moved from the business to this non-government uh, business. And uh, actually, um, we found that we have the key for um, scaling this. Uh, not just uh, going uh, uh, as business to schools and talking with uh, particular uh, teachers, but we uh, uh, now we had the tool for scaling this to uh, almost every school uh, in Russia, and we uh, created different uh, different uh, topics, uh, not just space engineering. But uh, uh, if you talk about space engineering, it was required strictly required start from the technological solution and after that we go uh, we went to scaling this uh, using government programs and uh, using uh, some communities of enthusiasts and such can i can, can i also follow up on that uh yeah i'm just curious about how on the scaling side like how did how did you start your recruitment in terms of the different like schools all over uh russia or is it a kind of a, from a top-down uh level where there's government participation and then um you got the, the different schools because you, you build up to a, a huge number that's yeah. amazing uh, yeah yeah uh actually in russia we have uh, two types of education we call it main education and additional education main education is a something like basic curriculum of school so you just uh, go through it and uh, take exams and go to university. Additional education is something like uh, uh, optional thing. Uh, you can choose different topics. Uh, for instance, um, most uh, parents in Russia choose not uh, STEM. Uh, they choose uh, music and uh, sports and something like that. But we also have STEM additional education in Russia. And it's uh, it's pretty popular. We have engineering roots in our history and etc. But it's still uh, it's still uh, space is still uh, inspiring people. Actually, still in uh, 2020, space is still inspiring. Uh, and um, uh, we uh, we started from this additional part. We started from additional education, and we started with uh, enthusiasts who just wanted to play with this. But after that, uh, I think that uh, after four or five years of uh, working this every year and make it stable and make it, uh, you know, well known, we uh, uh, we went into the main education part. So now we have something like NTI lesson. Every teacher can run it during this their main curriculum. For for instance, play with this rocketry on the lessons of physics or play with. Uh, uh, space simulation in the uh, uh, lessons of uh, computer science. So we just uh, try to combine the main uh, curriculum with this um, additional topics uh, to make uh, it uh, familiar uh, for teachers, useful for teachers in their playing in the main exam, uh, main curriculum and uh, preparing school children for uh, final exams. Uh, it's, it's, it's really hard because uh, uh, we cannot, uh, uh, it's really hard because we cannot just uh, translate it easily from mm -hmm. the uh, space engineering to math or physics, but it, it is required if you want to work with thousands of teachers uh, in schools. Great, thank you. Are there, are there age related streams, you know, high school, at 13 is one thing, high school at 18 is something else. Yeah, uh, yes, this is a good point. Actually, we started from the high school, so it's about 16, 17, uh, 15, 16, 17 years old. And uh, it, it was pretty uh, easy for us because we uh, want to empower uh, young people to make their projects. And during this teenage, they want to make something from them. They, they want to make something by self, yeah? And after that, we started to move lower and lower and lower. And now we have, we, we start now from 11, 12 years old, something like that, playing with these little paper rockets uh, uh, with power, powder engine uh, uh, going to the sky. And, then we move uh, uh, to the uh, different and um, 
more complex topics uh, in space engineering and uh, in uh, the last year in high schools uh, high school like 17 18 uh, years old they even run real projects I, I I wanted to note that the physics education and physics in schools starts from year 12 or year 11 I believe now in Russia yeah 12 11 12 yeah yeah so that would be about uh what is that year that would be year, year eight here year eight. eight here yeah physics okay cool yeah so like so it's it's come really early, much earlier than you, you have it in here. But uh, um, to what Alex is describing, this is interesting. This is kind of combination, to a large extent similar to what I can see in New Zealand. It's a combination of um, you know a governance plus the community efforts, and people who are involved in this NTI movement. They really talk to each other and they create some sort of informal groups and so the task Alexei task becomes much easier because he can pull up resources he needs not because they're being funded but just because they are interested yes um, yes exactly it's this is a very a very strong thing we have we have a real uh, big community of space enthusiasts in Russia and uh, we have different uh, sub communities. Uh, some people like uh, radio and exchanging with radio with the space station. Some people like rocketry. Some like uh, you know uh, space simulation. And we can join these communities and join join them with this uh, mm -hmm. big contest and with different events for them to make the yeah. bigger. Uh, the big and uh, working community for all of, all of them. Alexei, you probably don't know, but some time ago we discussed uh, with our group the um, the project coming for kids, coming from Professor Skobelev about the building antennas for lovers of radio, radio enthusiasm to build antennas and communicate with satellites and uh, do scheduling for them. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, today I was talking about. Uh, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, today I was talking about mostly about space uh, satellite engineering, uh, but we have uh, very interesting groups uh, about uh, um, analyze, analyzing space images. Uh, we have a very good group uh, playing with rocketry. We have al also uh, the group working with antennas and uh, communicating with. Uh, X uh, uh, level or with uh, radio level, so it's it's pretty different teams and uh, even startups. We have uh, several companies playing with different equipment for schools uh, or in different topics here, and uh, it, it's really interesting because we can show space not just for hardware engineers, but also for data analysts for. Uh, People who are interested in the transmission, people interested in even space flight, uh, because uh, uh, life supporting systems uh, required uh, uh, attention, and we have some tasks for uh, creating life supporting systems as well. Um, okay. I think we have a raised hand. Sorry, yes, um, just wanted to uh, apologize for coming in late. Uh, to everyone, um, Eamon Fraser. Um, I just wanted to, uh, I guess, ask, I, I heard you mention um, that uh, analysis of satellite images came up as a part of the work that you do with the students. I wonder, could you possibly elaborate a little bit more about what, what sort of, uh, what sort of things you, you work them with them on? Sorry, I think you're still muted. You're muted. Alexei, you on mute. Yes, sorry, sorry, sorry. In my presentation, I had just uh, just a single picture about this. I just want to show this picture to. Uh, Thank uh, you. Oh, sorry. To explain um, how it uh, works uh, here, we have a separate um, uh, contest. In this uh, NTI contest, I talked uh, about. Uh, 
uh, it is uh, dedicated. Look at this picture uh, in, in the bottom. Um, we have this uh, one of these contests uh, is um, dedicated to uh, space uh, uh, images analyzing. Uh, the young people uh, every year they have different problems. Uh, for instance, uh, this year they uh, run, uh, last year uh, they run uh, the problem uh, of rainforests, uh, degradation of rainforests uh, in uh, uh, South America. Uh, they uh, they uh, not just look at picture and uh, try to uh, interpret it, but uh, they uh, the young people had to create the program. Uh, using data analysis and uh, machine learning uh, tools to uh, automatically uh, find the borders of uh, these rainforests. And uh, from year to year, they look at the pictures and uh, they, their algorithms uh, was required to find the degradation of these forests. We use these uh, tools and these practices in Russia when we uh, run uh, children projects uh, of uh, look at, uh, looking at um, degradations of uh, uh, ice in the northern uh, ocean and uh, uh, looking for uh, fires in the Russian Siberian forest when we have a lot of fires in uh, summertime and uh, uh, automatically recognition of uh, garbages around uh, big cities uh, of Russia. We have a lot of uh, you know, problems with garbages, uh, non-controlled garbages uh, um, in the fields and something like that. So young people uh, try to uh, use space images to write their own algorithms. Uh, on, and we have uh, separate teams uh, of enthusiasts who work with this problem and who prepare it and uh, uh, run it with uh, young people. That's very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Um, maybe Eric or Emelin, would you like to say a few words about the current development of the coming from Rocket Lab and why we're interested in Cubes apps in particular or how it can be used here? So just for Alexei's benefit. Uh, yeah, well, uh, uh, for, uh, first, thanks so much, uh, Alexei, for, for your insights. Um, it's de definitely um, very um, uh, uh, important because, uh, for one, we we also have tried um, competitions here in New Zealand as well. So the past two years, and Yuri was uh, was part of one of the teams, for example, last year um, uh, that participated, and at a kind of like a, a more a higher level, um, and not necessarily. Um, kind of a younger generation, but uh, we also did not um, uh, kind of like limit it. We also had high school kids uh, uh, as well. And the reason why, um, you know, CubeSats are very important, uh, as, as you might know, is uh, low hanging fruit here is like data analysis and the applications that come from, from all of these, where uh, the, the majority of the uh, uh, Basically, the the opportunities right now are are in uh, the applications and and uh, the the payloads that might be um, created um, for this. And so, I think uh, the more that we can encourage the younger generation to start early uh, in looking at these technologies. Uh, and that is, and especially because the, of the democratization of the technology, uh, now anybody can uh, can certainly um, uh, be be part of this. We were just like talking to, for example, India, um, uh, another organization, just a few hours ago, and uh, we were just amazed by the number of people that uh, actually get involved in their courses for doing cubes. As it's like it's in the thousands, and of course, uh, that's also another big. Um, a uh, big country that, that does it, um, but but yeah, for for us, it's it's really important to yeah. kind of encourage this. I, I really like how you've designed this so that you have uh, engaging uh, younger students and uh, are sort of building up to more and more complicated projects until you get to ones that actually uh, go into space. 
and so that's uh, that's a real way of of connecting the the actual space activities with this entire and uh, spreading it out to this entire educational uh, program and perspective. Um, there were, we're just at the early days of uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, you know making use of of rocket labs, uh, frequent launches of small satellites from New Zealand. Uh, uh, Peter Beck has identified, you know, opportunities for uh, New Zealand created payloads, uh, CubeSats, and uh, we just had the first uh, Auckland uh, students uh, CubeSat launched. And so maybe that can happen more in the future, but it's it's a great example of, of leveraging, uh, you know, uh, real space ac access uh, through CubeSats uh, and making the best use of it in uh, across these broad international uh, inter uh, educational programs. So um, yeah, I really uh, I'm I'm very glad to learn about what you're doing, and, and we'll look forward to uh, checking out your some of your web links to uh, to look at some uh, ideas and examples because. Yeah, I actually have one uh, quick question, or maybe it's not a quick question, but uh, um, just trying to understand uh, kind of like what were your biggest challenges when you started kind of the program and how did you overcome it? Uh, well, uh, yes, I, I will answer. Um, I, I just will just start from the this to topic you uh, found here is about the combination of upstream and downstream in space because yeah. uh, surely the main the main money and interest and business in the downstream part but when we talk about um, young people and their interest uh, to space they are mostly about upstream part mm -hmm. because they want to run rockets and play with this engineering stuff and etc but uh, making the application uh, working with real da data and uh, find interested in the uh, uh, lay, uh, in the last years of school like in 17 16 when young people want to change the world around them and they find that space satellite images uh, are very good uh, the stuff to work with real problems around them not just playing with it mm -hmm. so uh, we try to combine this upstream and downstream part to make interest and at the same time make possible to run real projects. I think that the main challenge, um, the main challenge we had in Russia, uh, it's probably a very specific <laughs> thing, uh, not, not, not just uh, the same as, as your uh, situation, but uh, the main challenge we have is uh, regulation, actually, because in, in Russia we have very strong regulation of space uh, industry. Mm -hmm. It's a partially uh, uh, it's partially about um, uh, secret and war things in the heads of some uh, leaders of our industry and uh, we have a lack of space uh, startups. We have uh, several mm -hmm. of them actually in uh, Russia. We have uh, very big um, difficulties with um, uh, uh, creating new companies, new businesses here uh, uh, about space uh, programs. And that's why uh, we uh, need to have two phases, actually. One phase is for government, which means that we just work with talented young people, uh, going with them into the space uh, industry, uh, working with uh, national historical background, blah, 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 blah. And the second phase we have, uh, we work with startups, with businesses who want to find new ideas, new solutions. And uh, this is pretty difficult actually, because if, when we talk about teachers, as they do not know anything about this big uh, stuff and businesses and et cetera, and teachers just uh, want to understand that young people uh, are going to work in the prospective industry. So we need to explain, somehow explain it to teachers and to parents that this topic is uh, pretty prospective. Uh, it, it has uh, not just historical, you know, 
uh, routes, but also it's very prospective nowadays. It connects with the real businesses, with real challenges and uh, etc. So I think this is the main di difficulty in, in our country. Uh, and I think that um, I, I, I will add here that um, space, um, uh, up, especially up, upstream part of uh, space engineering is very expensive. So mm -hmm. if we compare uh, with the copters or with the robots, with some uh, working uh, stuff to play with, uh, it's very expensive. And that's uh, why it's very hard to uh, uh, help uh, young uh, enthusiasts to run their own projects. And that's why we need this, you know, pyramid when uh, uh, on the top we have this very uh, uh, exciting and uh, advanced young people who is able to run their own CubeSat into space because we cannot just uh, make the CubeSats for this uh, mm -hmm. bottom of this pyramid and uh, mm -hmm. that's we run with simulators with constructors with uh, some simpler tools to make them something uh, available but also we have this downstream part and in the in the downstream part we can run with the real projects from the beginning because uh, it's, it's pretty uh, cheap to start with mm -hmm. uh, but it's not so interesting for many young people mm -hmm. because it's about boring data and uh, you know <laughs> you need to um, uh, go with this mess and yeah that's it <laughs> thank you Alexey, do you have any getting any sponsorship from a company like Roscosmos to for CubeSat launches for education purposes or, yeah. or any funding from? Uh, yes, 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 for sure, for sure. Uh, we have uh, the special Roscosmos programs for young people. Uh, I, I was talking about uh, experiments on the International Space Station. Uh, we also okay. have a special program for students CubeSats. Uh, every university in Russia is, uh, have possibility to run uh, the group said, uh, not uh, 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 not without fee, but uh, with very little amount of money spending for these uh, students, uh, groups are run. And uh, we have some additional programs from Roscosmos, but I, I think that it's very conservative, you know, organization, and it's not so easy to get uh, support from them, actually. So we, we need to fight for every step, fight for every thing we need. But uh, it works, actually, it works. We also has, uh, we have uh, uh, several uh, uh, businesses, several startups and businesses in Russia, uh, S7 Aerospace and uh, we have small companies uh, which work in Skolkovo and other uh, accelerators. Uh, but with these companies, we usually work with the experts. So we do not uh, get money from these small companies, but we get experts and uh, people who work with our students who make the tasks, uh, help with equipment and etc. So it, it really helps because they are open-minded, they are globally oriented and they just know uh, very new technologies in the commercial space. And that's why we work with these companies as well. Good, thank you. That's, um, that's cool. Okay, I, ju I just, uh, sorry, Yuri, I just wanted to add one thing about the possible uh, partnership, yeah? <laughs> Something like that. Uh, actually, we, um, we had uh, several tries of uh, making international uh, stuff uh, here in uh, this uh, NTI context, uh, context or space engineering context. And uh, we, we really wanted to translate something to English, mm -hmm. but we do not have, uh, you know, particular interest. If you will find some particular interest and uh, you will, uh, um, just explain what things uh, we need uh, to start with, uh, with the translation to English and so translate some materials, some uh, online simulators, some challenges probably, uh, for instance, challenge between uh, New Zealand school children and uh, Russian school children playing with some space stuff. It would be really interesting for us to find such a partnership and find 
real interest and uh, probably we will find some resources on our side, some resources on your side and uh, combining this, we can run something international. And uh, that's, that's very interesting for us actually. Um, one question, Alexey, is the contents, the contest as it is now available for participants from abroad? Technically, yes, but we, uh, right now, we have uh, the, uh, um, the context, um, the text of uh, problems and tasks and contest in Russian. But okay. it can be translated to English uh, because technically the system is open for everyone in the internet. So you can just okay. go inside. So given, and, given the interest, uh, and, the uh, can be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I guess that can be a converging, uh, converging uh, approach here for the side to uh, pursue. Okay. Well, yes, yes, especially, especially, uh, especially while we are uh, in this online situation, because uh, <laughs> playing with real hardware is uh, pretty complex to join together as a school children from New Zealand and Russia because of, of this distance bit, between us. But uh, if while we are still online, it's possible to make something interesting. I okay. <laughs> right. Any other questions? Uh, the competition finals, they, I gather they're held in Russia. Whereabouts in Russia? Yeah, yeah, we run it, we run it uh, in different uh, cities of Russia and different universities and uh, uh, space, uh, um, space part, uh, space engineering um, competition we run in uh, this town of Karolov, which is named uh, by the name of Karolov. Uh, the well-known constructor of uh, Russian uh, space programs. And uh, we just uh, uh, combine people from different cities and they go by plane in the main point, main part, uh, and they work together. Uh, some, pe some young people just um, uh, uh, create their teams uh, from different cities and they, they just met uh, a life on this final stage of the competition. This is very inspiring for them to, to make this connection in life and uh, work together. But uh, actually in this March, this March during to, uh, according to COVID, uh, we had to create online competition. So they had, um, their teams was online. They use Zoom and Discord and different other communication tools and they, they created their uh, software uh, from different parts of the country and combining it and send it to a simulation a place when it, it was run. So it, it was pretty uh, simpler this uh, spring, but we hope this next spring we will have better situation and we will be able to join together a life. Which takes all the joy out of travel, right? John Karolov is yeah, a yeah, sure. small town near Moscow, so it's, uh, so it's it's not far away from Moscow. Uh, it'd be a lovely excuse yeah. to go to Moscow again. Loved it. Be happy to go again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to go to Moscow pr pretty uh, often uh, as well, working for Space Adventures. That's great. Now I'm super jealous. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> All right, uh, anything else? Uh, would we be able to get a copy of the PowerPoint presentation that you showed at all? We always post a recording, a link to the recording on the meetup and the Facebook group. So, uh, do, and we can send out that link uh, via Yuri as well. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I can send, uh, also I can send for John the example of this uh, educational materials we have for Rocketry and uh, if mm. you will be interested in this, we can try to translate it on our site and prepare something for you. Yeah, we would be interested as well. I, I think there's a, a lot well, keep of... Us, keep us posted actually on, keep, keep us on the loop, it will be interesting. Well, you can tell I made the mistake of showing my son. I'm not sure I've got any option. I think I'm committed <laughs> regardless. No, no, he's, it was great, actually. Yeah. I, I wasn't able to persuade my daughter to listen. So. <laughs> no, my daughter passed. But she's older. <laughs>
But yeah, I've got all the books sitting here. So uh, uh. I've, I've been really keen to do it. And now my son is champing at the bit, which is great because he's got a good group of friends and it's across two schools. So oh. I was thinking an after school club would be a way to go and get them into it from that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm very keen. John, we can we can meet up for a coffee and probably in, in um, are you in Kelvin campus campus? Uh, I'm in Lowell Bay in Wellington, so I'm not far oh, away. Okay. And I pop up to the campus fairly regularly. Yeah, sure. Okay. And and just to note also there are workshops that are happening uh, here in Christchurch uh, um, with the rocketry um, kind of uh, Christchurch Rocketry Society, but but also I'm sure that they can uh, they can also share their materials because uh, that's being done in the, the main library. Okay, let, let's um, let's see how we can develop it. It'll be a slow time in um, in New Zealand though for the next couple of months. It's like almost <laughs> yeah. like Chinese New Year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but I guess we will we'll we'll try to gauge the interest and see what can be done. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you very much, Alexei. Really appreciate it. And uh, please join the Facebook group uh, at least to, to, to see what's going on. And probably it's been um, the meetup uh, posting duplicated there usually. Right. And then, okay. yeah. We'll, we'll thank you. That. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was excellent. You. Appreciate your time. Thank you for presenting. Yeah. Okay. Hope to see you again. Well, yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.